Lord, we just thank you for this time, this time of worship that we get to have, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us, Father. We just thank you, Lord, for all the everything that's going on in this world around you, that we can trust in you, Father, that we look to you, Father. You are the author and the finisher of our faith, Father, and we just thank you, Lord, and we magnify you and glorify you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me and know his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun said. ransomed me his grace runs deep while I was a slave to sin Jesus died for me yes he died for me who the sun sets free oh is free
encourage you from the Word of God. In John 3.16, it says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Romans 5 and 8, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God loved all the people of the world, even when we were sinners. And God still loves us today. In fact, he loved us so much he gave his only son to redeem us from sin. Well, you can't begin to imagine how much God loves you. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not going to face difficult times and challenges of life. In fact, 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 says this, This know also that in the last days perilous time will come. In the last days before the coming of our Lord, there will be hurtful, harmful, unpredictable, uncomfortable, high-risk periods of time. In fact, we are encountering all those uh, times right now. Jesus said in John 16 and 33, In the world you'll have tribulations. Tribulation describes times of distress, affliction, or trouble that can be very intense. But Jesus didn't stop there. He continues by saying, Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Well, we all like to be in control. In fact, it makes us uncomfortable when we're not in control. We all have our daily routine, and if something disrupts that routine, it upsets us. And sometimes we focus on the problem or disruption, and the more we focus on it, the more intense and the bigger it becomes. In the book of Daniel, there's a story of Daniel and the lion's den. Now, if you're not familiar with that story, it's found in Daniel chapter 6. I can't think of a bigger problem than a den of hungry lions, and to get to know them up close and personal had to be intense. First of all, Daniel wasn't bothering anybody but the devil. In fact, most Christians have found it hard to relate to Daniel because he was so good. In fact, he was so good that 120 men could not find any fault in him. He was faithful to the king. He did his job well. He wasn't hurting anybody. In fact, he was minding his own business. He was simply praying to God three times a day. In fact, he wasn't even enforcing anybody to pray with him. Maybe you feel that way. I love God. I love my family. I love my job. And I'm minding my own business when all this trouble showed up in my life. Well, that present trouble may cause you to start thinking about how am I going to pay my bills? What if I lose my job? What if I, someone in my family contracts the virus? I love God. I want to please Him. And this shows up in my life. Now I'm suffering with everyone else. What's wrong with this picture? You know, you may not be bothering anybody, but because you serve God, you're bothering the devil. Jesus said this, in the world you'll have tribulation. Shall have means that it will happen to you. And oftentimes it's the most inopportune time that these things happen to us. Really, there's never a good time to be sick or even to lose your job. But let's think for a minute about it. Daniel, he certainly didn't do anything to deserve being sick or uh, thrown in a den of lions. We can only imagine what was going through his mind as he was led to the lion's den. He probably thought, what have I done to deserve this? You know, Daniel was in a great deal of trouble, and it looked like a hopeless situation. So you may be facing what seems like a hopeless situation today, but as Paul told the Thessalonians, he said, not to sorrow as others that have no hope. It is that, as he goes on to say, we have hope in the risen Christ. Without Jesus Christ, we would be hopeless. But I'm glad to report that Jesus didn't leave us in trouble. For he says, be of good cheer. He said, I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer means to take heart. It means to be courageous. Jesus was saying in this world, you will have to go through some distressing times, but take heart, be full of courage, for I have overcome the world. 
Now Daniel didn't know that God was going to deliver him from the lion. He was living in the moment. And you may be living in the moment right now. He was thrown in a den of a lion. And on his way down, he was thinking about the pain of being mauled and eaten by lions. And at this moment, you may be troubled with thoughts that are running wild in your mind. And fear may be a hold of you. But I want to encourage you to be of good cheer. Take courage because you're not alone. Jesus said, I'm with you always, even at the end of the age. And we know that God delivered Daniel from the lions, and God will deliver you as well. Now, first of all, you need to realize that you don't have to be perfect to experience God's victory and blessing in your life. Christians aren't perfect, they're just forgiven. You should never believe that the Word of God isn't true, or that God has forsaken you, because that's a lie of the devil. And if you believe his lie, then you are in big trouble. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says this, But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted, above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. Don't let the devil tell you that you're a failure, or that God doesn't love you. Just because you have a problem doesn't mean that you sin in some way. Daniel didn't sin, but he was in big trouble. Now, maybe you have sinned, and if you have, repent. God will forgive you. God put 1 John 1, 9 in the Bible so that as believers we can repent and receive forgiveness. The Bible says he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Don't look to man to solve your problem. In the story, the king was powerless to save Daniel from his faith. We don't look to man, we look to Jesus, who's our help in the time of trouble. Hebrews 4, 16 says this, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need. Finally, you need to keep a spirit of faith in the midst of trouble, for God will deliver you. Psalms uh, 34, 19 says, For many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. See, the victory of Jesus is a continuous, abiding victory now and in the future. Jesus overcame the world, and he will always overcome the world. He's here to help you to enforce that victory that you possess in, him, in the midst of the viruses, disruptions, or loss of your job, or whatever you may be facing. You don't have to face anything alone because Jesus is always with you. I want to pray with you for just a minute before we close this uh, video presentation. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we're so thankful that the Word declares that Jesus is the faithful and true. And today, Lord, we're facing all kinds of challenges. There are challenges of sickness, Lord. There are challenges financially. There are challenges that people face within their home with their children. Lord God, there, there are people that face the challenge of addiction. Father, we're thankful that your grace is sufficient to deliver us. And we pray today, Father God, that whatever the problem may be, Lord God, they'll lay that before you. That, Father, as we look to you, not only you forgive us of our sins, Lord, you provide a solution to our problems, but you, the God of grace and mercy, that will forgive us. So I pray today, Lord, that your blessings will be upon all that will hear this message. Lord, that they'll take heart and courage that regardless of what they face today, Lord God, that you're for them, with them. Lord God, that you lead them to victory. We give you praise, Lord, in Jesus' name.
Jesus, the most wonderful name of all names. Jesus, the only name that brings freedom and hope. Oh, and when I speak your name, mountains move and chains are loose. Oh, when I speak your name, darkness. Most beautiful. 